there it is, the picturesque home of Bam Margera, television superstar, skateboarder extraordinaire, and keeper of Brandon Novak, ex-junkie. Yo, Novak, get your ass out of bed. It's time to go to Baltimore for your homecoming. A walk down memory lane. I'm quite excited about it. And we're gonna get brilliant footage. So now let me get ready, because I'm stoked. Have fun in Baltimore, fellas. A man who let me live in his house for free. A homosexual man. But I would let him, like, shave my ass for money. You know, a lot of degrading things. Shave your ass for money? Yeah. Is that some kind of fucking fetish or something like that? I don't think it's his fetish, but I think he knew that was the closest he was gonna get. Shaved your ass? Yeah. Like my ass, my asshole. Oh my god. You know, just, <laughs> the money, you know, just for ten fucking dollars, man. I went from a professional skateboarder that had the world in my hands to letting a fucking gay man shave my asshole for a pill of heroin. I really can't put in words the feelings that I have at the moment. This is the first time I've been back here in three years. This place was hell on earth. Behind this garage door is where I lived. It's funny as you can see is it was someone's house above, so I always had to hide and sneak in. I had to come late at night and leave early in the morning. I was living like an abandoned dog. This place on the inside represented everything I was. Cold, dark, feelingless, emotionless. It makes you numb. It's sickening inside there. And the toilet wasn't even hooked up. It's covered with shit and piss. Just had some water in it, I guess. We were just pissed that it filled up so much it looked like water. And I couldn't even bear to piss in there, it smelled so bad. So you can imagine that those fumes came out of this whole place. And it's just so wet and damp everywhere in there. But what's funny is when I was high, this place was like a like a mansion. When I was sober, it was worse than being incarcerated. Other junkies would come in here, old needles. Cookers, matches, lighters, candles, because that's what we use for electricity. I live there, man. This is my home. I went from a professional skateboarder to this garage being my home. This is the infamous furniture store. This was the place I came to the last day I was getting high. This furniture, as you see, is like handcrafted and it's worth quite a bit. What is this? Something that has a price tag of 80 bucks and that's all that fucking matters when you're a junkie. I sat right on that corner for about an hour watched and waited for my time to get away with it clean and clear. I walked at a really fast pace and grabbed the table and I got two steps away and I noticed no one had appeared from the store at all. So I went back and got just a top end piece for the table. Price value 600 bucks total. So I thought I was gonna have a great day getting high all day long. And he's just walking around all fucking day in the hot sun trying to get rid of this furniture. And you know, he's trying to bargain with people who don't even want it to begin with. He's like, look, I got a $400 table right here. I'll sell it to you for $250. $600 worth of furniture, no one will buy it. I couldn't even get five fucking dollars. Finally, at the end of the night, the sun's down and he's been working all day. This has been the most long, drawn out, exhausting day in a dope fiend's life. And I hear a horn beep. Turn around, it's a cherry red Cadillac, shining like a diamond. And this very nice, respectable, or what you would think was respectable, three-piece wearing business suit man gets out. You know the furniture kid, he asks. <sighs> Trying to sell it, man. He's like, I'll give you 40 bucks but I don't want the furniture. I know exactly what he means by this offer he just propositioned me with. Which means that he wanted to suck his dick, and the guy had a, a ring on his finger, so he was obviously married, and he was just a sick fuck who wanted to suck some young kid's dick. Everybody has said you're gonna end up on the corner selling your ass, Brandon. I said that will never be me. I will stop before it gets there. I didn't really think today was the day I let a married, 45 to 55 year old grown man with a wedding ring on suck my dick, man. Coming from the kid who was a professional skateboarder who signed autographs, people used to want my autograph. Now I'm letting a grown man suck my dick. And at that very moment, the only person that flashed across my eyes was my mother, man. 
someone who gave me all these fucking morals and values and showed me right, taught me right, led me right, none of that shit mattered. All I saw was a pill of dough, man. I couldn't even write that part of my book. Like, it took me a week to write what I knew I was gonna write. And I couldn't even put it on paper. I haven't been back to this spot since that night. I've woken up in cold sweats. I've woken up in tears. All over this spot right here. And the decision I made. And that night when I got the money, I went up and I bought some dope and I got robbed. So now, not only does he have to suffer the indignity of having some dude suck his dick for 40 bucks, but he has no heroin to ease the pain. And the next morning, he woke up sober for the first time in a couple years. And that morning, when I opened my eyes, the desperation I felt on the inside, and the desperation all around me, coming out here to see this every day, piss, shit, needles. I was a walking shell. You know, I had a body with nothing inside of it but sickness. I knew I could physically, mentally, and emotionally not take another moment of this lifestyle. I came from better, and I was taught better, and I just knew that it was time to be a man and be responsible for my own actions. And the day before, my buddy said, look, man, call me in the morning, and I'll, you know, I'll get you to rehab, and I saved 50 cents. That 50 cents was like a lifeline for me. It said, 50 cents saved my life. This is the phone that I called to get my ride to rehab. I had 50 cents to my name. That 50 cents was gonna save my life. It was the make or break point. I couldn't get through. I had no ride, I had no way. All I had was this, this real sad environment to look at. It was at that point I just knew this is my last shot. This is my last and only hope. This paid for him right here.